Stephen Morales here, and in today's video we're going to be covering some post rehab exercises that you're going to do if you have shoulder problems. Rotator cuff tear, labrum tear, shoulder dislocations, which I've dislocated both. Good way to strengthen this. Now, I want to clarify I am not a medical doctor, I am not a physical therapist, I am a medical exercise specialist, meaning that I'm going to take over after you leave a physical therapist or a doctor, right? After the, you're out of that acute stage, I'm actually the management side of it, okay? Now, three exercises today. These are kind of the bread and butter that I do with my clients that come to me for shoulder problems. So, first one, we're going to do internal and external rotation. After that, we're going to do something that's called toes and nose. And then after that, the last thing that we're going to do is a unilateral band pull apart, okay? Now, for this, you're going to need a, a band I have a blue band right here. Um, you can find these really, really cheap on Amazon. You can find the tri-pack that's going to have three of them in there. And then this is going to be the heavier set ones, which is going to come with the blue and the black. Okay. Um, as far as which band you should be using, you're really going to have to gauge that based off how strong you are. Okay. If you've actually left the physical therapist and you've kind of been out a couple weeks now, after doing the treatment with them, I'm going to probably say you're probably on that green to maybe this blue band, all right? Now with that, we're going to fan this out. I'm going to grab it. You're going to tie it off on something. This is a little bit lower than I'd want it to be, but I don't have anything quite my height that I would like, but find something that you can tie it off on, door handle, whatever. You're also going to need some type of towel or a small pillow or something like that. And what you're going to do with this is you're actually going to place it underneath your arm here. For internal and external rotation, you want your arm slightly what's called adducted, meaning out from the body. I don't want my arm placed all the way up against my body because with that, the humoral vein, the vein that's going to the shoulder that's actually supplying the blood flow, it's going to kind of get pinched and cut off, right? So we're not going to get the best blood flow to the shoulder, which you're going to want if you're exercising, right? So let's start with external first. I'm going to place this underneath here. I like it so that my arm is 90 degrees or close to that, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect, but close to that. Meaning I don't want my arm forward and I don't want it super far back. Externally, you're going to be weaker than internally, meaning it's harder to push something off you than it is to pull something to you, okay? So with that, when we do external, typically I'm not gonna be set as far out from the band just because you're going to be weaker internally, or externally, sorry. So here, I'm gonna form, form kind of like a triangle. So here, about my midpoint, and then I'll externally to here. I'm not gonna go further than that, meaning that as I pull out this way, I'm not gonna go further, because as I go further and further, I'm creating more strain on the rotator cuff of the front part of the shoulder. Now I've dislocated, like I said, both of my shoulders. If you pull my arm too far, you're gonna dislocate my shoulder. Why is that? Because the, the head of the humerus right here is actually pushing forward when I start going too far externally. With this, you have something called the glenohumeral ligaments on the front side of the shoulder. It's pushing against that. Mine are kind of sublux, meaning I've, I've stretched through all of mine, so they can't protect my shoulder as much and keep it in the socket like they should. So you push too far forward, boom, it's going to pop out. Essentially, it's creating too much strain. So a triangle here, so from here, to there, no further, right? And this is it. I'm trying to keep my arm relaxed, my grip relaxed. I want to do that because I'm trying to get it so that my rotator cuff is working and I'm not using my arm to do this movement, okay? For all of these exercises, we're going to do 12 reps, okay? I'm also trying to keep my fist in alignment so it's not flexed back like this or like this. It's straight in alignment, okay? So we would do 12 external rotation, and you would do that per arm, right? So external here, then I go to this side, do external, and then I would do internal on both. And I'm not going to do both of these, but I'm going to show you what internal would look like. That way you're not seeing my back while I'm trying to do my other side. With this, I'm going to be stronger. I'm going to walk out now, and it's the same kind of range of motion, meaning I'll pull to here, and then I'll pull right to here, right? So here, just like that. Keeping the arm and the grip relaxed, pulling in like that. Medium pacing. You don't need to rush through this, okay? You'll feel a band kind of on the front side of the shoulder right here. as your rotator cuff working, okay? This is also very, very good for anybody that's going to do like a chest day, right? Warming up the rotator cuff 
and the posterior shoulder girdle, which we're going to get to in a second, before they load their body with a ton of heavy weight. Okay? So, 12 on each, right? We're going to do external first on both sides and then internal on both sides. After that, you're going to do something that's called toes and nose. You're essentially going to come up here to the wall. You're going to bring your arms straight up in the air. And you want them straight. People that have really, really tight shoulders, I'll notice that they bend like this. It's harder for them to straighten their arms all the way out because of the tightness around the shoulder. That could be both on the, it, with the internal components of the shoulder, but also the muscles around it. So uh, it's called your posterior shoulder girdle. It's all the muscles that are going to be around your shoulder blade area. Okay? So toes in the wall. My nose is touching. My arms come straight up. Now once I'm here, I want to make sure that I'm set down and I'm not like this, right? My shoulders aren't way up in the air. So I'm set down. And from here, all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull my arm back, keeping it straight and in alignment. So here, I come back and then back down. Then I'll do the other side. Now I'm going to be alternating, okay? Just like this. I actually mis misspoke on this. Uh, not 12, we're going to do 10. 10 on everything. We'll keep it simple. We have three things, 10 reps on everything. For this right here, it's going to be alternating, okay? So back and forth like this. I'm going to do 10 on each side. So if you're going to do a single count, you're going to do 20 total. It's very, very important that you follow that pathway like this. I mean, from the side, it's a very, very short movement, just like that and here, okay? I'm getting all the muscles around the shoulder blade to fire to pull my arm back. I don't want my elbows or anything like that necessarily to bend more as I pull through that because essentially what you're doing is you're trying to get to a range of motion that you don't have. You're bending your elbow to push and get, create the illusion of that range of motion, okay? So really concentrate on keeping those straight. So, 10 per arm here, alternating, and then after that, we're going to do a unilateral band pull apart. Most people might know what a band pull apart is. Now, unilaterally just means I'm going to be alternating and pulling kind of on one side and then the other side. The cool thing with this is you're going to have mobilization, movement versus stabilization, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to place my feet together. I'm going to hold this band up. I want my arms close to parallel with the ground with my fists forward. I don't want my fists up like that or bending down like this, okay? Parallel, flush right here. I have a slight bend in my elbow because if I lock my arms out, you'll have the tendency to strain your neck and your traps. If I bend my elbows, we can use a little bit more of what's called the rear delt, right through here, okay? Back of the shoulder. So once I'm here, I'm going to pull with one arm. I'm coming out like this to my side, and then I'll come back, and then I'll do the other side, just like this, right? So mobilization, my left arm just moved right here. This just moved, while my right arm is stabilizing and making sure that this doesn't go with it, right? And then I'll just go back and forth like this. Same thing with the grip and the arm, making sure it's relaxed. That way we can utilize more of the muscles that we want to, okay? So for this one too, it's a posterior shoulder girdle, the rear delt, okay? And we'll just go back and forth like this. 10 per side, so 20 total. We're alternating like that, okay? About the pace I was going. None of this stuff you're going to rush through. There's no point to it. And move now, we say speed hides inefficiencies, right? You're going to rush through something that you're struggling with. We don't want to do that. That's going to increase your chance of having an injury, all right? So we have three exercises, all right? Internal, external rotation. We have our toes and nose. We have our band pull-aparts, our unilateral band pull-aparts. And it's 10 reps on everything. You're going to do three rounds on this, okay? You would do your three rounds. In between, I'm typically stretching too. I'm doing a pec stretch, right? I'm trying to make sure that... I'm not just hanging around or foam rolling or using the lacrosse ball and getting some soft tissue work, especially when we're noticing things like the shoulders are really, really tight on the toes and nose, right, where I'm bending my elbows more. We're going to address that in between each round to make sure that we're making progress in the right direction. So this is kind of the first video. I'm going to do a series with this. We're going to get a couple other uh, videos with some different techniques that you can use, but this is my bread and butter one. This is the one that I'm going to use right out the gate. I do this personally uh, before I do chest day. I always warm up my rotator cuff and all of that. One of the other things this, this is doing, if you've noticed, with this, it's, it's a one to two rule that I follow. It's one for the front side of the body, the anterior front side of the body, two for the back side or the posterior side of the body. We have a tendency to be very, very weak with our back 
and we're very front side dominant. That's why you'll see people with bad posture where they're super tight here because they always use it and they're pulled in like this. Okay? We're following that one to two rule. We had one for the front side, we're doing two for the back side. And this is a general rule that I follow with not only this, but when it comes to a lot of strength training stuff that I'll do too, I'll make sure that I'm hitting that back side and I'm not so front side dominant. Okay, so I want to thank you guys for watching. If you have any, any questions or comments or anything like that, definitely hit me up on those. Uh, click the subscribe button for me too because I'm going to be pumping out a lot more videos for the medical exercise or the post-rehab side of things. And thanks for watching.